As the Delta variant spreads throughout the world, investors wonder what will that do to the pace of the economic recovery here in the U.S. Here to talk about it is Andrew Hunter, senior U.S. economist at Capital Economics. Uh, Andrew, good to see you. Now, you believe growth was already slowing a bit, even before the potential Delta drag. Why? Yes, yeah, so I think you know we have already seen pretty clear signs that uh, economic growth is going to slow pretty sharply in the third quarter. I think particularly if you look at the retail sales report we had just last week for July, it showed sales falling by about 1% on the month, so clearly pretty disappointing. Um, I think the main driver of that is probably just sort of unsurprisingly uh, the slowdown in income growth that we've seen over the past few months. So. On the one hand, you know, obviously the boost from the the stimulus checks back in March, that's clearly now faded. Uh, more recently, we've also had surging consumer prices in a lot of sectors starting to uh, weigh on, weigh on uh, incomes as well. Um, but yeah, I think that there certainly are some signs as well in the July data that um, we could perhaps be seeing some signs of, of an economic drag from this uh, latest wave of virus cases driven by the, the Delta variant. Um, and certainly if you consider you know, what's happened since July in the, in the sort of first three or four weeks of August, um, in terms of virus cases, hospitalizations in particular, um, you know, the situation has really only got worse. So in that environment, you know, I, I do think there is a bit of a risk that the economic data for August could be uh, quite a bit weaker than a lot of people are anticipating. Mm -hmm. We saw today, we got uh, some housing numbers, uh, pretty good though, uh, for the month of July. Uh, sales of uh, new homes are increasing after three straight monthly declines. Uh, what do you make of that report? And also the fact that we had a, a gangbusters unemployment uh, number uh, for last month. Yeah, so I guess the you know the housing market is perhaps detached from what's going on in in other sectors of the economy. Certainly, the likes of retail sales, perhaps certainly now eighteen months into the pandemic, people are you know more easily able to to sort of work and operate in the housing market and complete transactions um, regardless of what's going on with the virus. But I guess more generally, it, it is worth acknowledging that you know what almost whatever happens over the next few months, it is. Is, you know, it's the economic impact of this current wave of cases is unlikely to be anywhere near as large as uh, what we've seen in the past. Certainly not anywhere near as bad as as, as it was in uh, spring last year. Um, clearly, the you know the vaccinations have have changed the picture there. Uh, more than sixty percent of adults are now fully vaccinated. Um, and I guess the, a key result of that is that it doesn't look like we're going to get any sort of new widespread restrictions on activity in terms of state or city uh, governments closing retail stores or restaurants or anything like that. I think the one sort of risk instead of that is more what we potentially might see in terms of consumer behaviour. So. You know, whether we see these uh, potential rising fears about the virus uh, sort of almost persuading some consumers to voluntarily uh, stay stay at home or at least stay away from these crowded spaces. And that could potentially uh, weigh on spending in the services sector again. Um, we have, I guess, already seen some tentative signs that, that might be ha happening if you look at uh, some of the survey evidence for August that we've had. So. Uh, just over a week ago, we had the University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index for early August. It fell very sharply. Um, it actually suggests that confidence is now lower than it was um, during the, the initial height of the pandemic in April last year, which is pretty striking. Uh, we also had the PMI for August just yesterday. It doesn't always get a lot of attention uh, in the US, but again, fell very sharply, driven by the services uh, component. So again, potentially consistent with that idea that um, rising fears about the virus are, are starting to weigh on spending in the services sector again. In the 30 seconds I have left, what are your expectations uh, for this Jackson Hole Symposium that's going to kick off on Thursday and Fed Powell's speech on Friday, given the fact that the Delta variant adds another layer of uncertainty for all of us? 
Yeah, so I guess the you know the key point we learned from the the minutes from the July meeting last week, the Fed clearly hasn't made a decision on when to start tapering its asset purchases. That's still a live issue, and the the Delta variant clearly just adds to the uncertainty. So, in that environment, I think you know they're going to have to wait for another month or two more of, of economic data. I don't think Powell's going to be in a position to make any sort of strong statements one way or another this week. Uh, I think a lot of people are in agreement with you. All right, that's going to do it for now. Thanks so much for being with us. Andrew Hunter, Senior U.S. Economist at Capital Economics.